hi, I'm on this side for a little bit of this study. And what I want you to see right here is the Webster's 1828 Dictionary for want. Efficiency, defect, absence of that which is necessary or useful as a want of power or knowledge. Okay? A need, necessary. And when we have need, a want, occasion for something necessary, a state that requires supply or relief. Now, I don't know about you, but we come to times in our life that we say, I need it. I want it. And we go to God in prayer and we go, I need it. I want it. And I think we use words that we don't even know what the words are. So I want to show you through the Bible. A short say, I mean, we could we can elongate this. And we're not going to. But look at Psalm 23, 1. The, the famous Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, it does not say, I shall not need. And we got to establish the fact between want and need. A need is limited. A want is unlimited. We have a need of essential of air, food, water, water, excuse me, and light. You may say clothing. There are some people in the world they don't have no clothing, and they get by. But if you take the water away from them, they're going to die. You take the food away from them, they're going to die. You take the light away from them, they're going to die. You take the air away from them, they're going to die. We've got to realize that Paul says to be content. The essentials that we have is air, food, water, light. We live in a day, we got to have a phone, we got to have a car, we got to... Do we? There, uh, we had this, this uh, earth, uh, hurricane, couldn't think of it. We had this hurricane Ian come through Florida. Last week. It wiped out houses. It wiped out boats. Cars are underwater. Uh, these storage sheds, they're, they're gone. The people are still living. And churches are out there helping. And they're coming up to the church. They're going say, oh, please give me a boat. Oh, please give me a Cadillac. Oh, no. Uh, I heard one say, excuse me, sir. Do you have a cold cup of water? It's been days since I had a cold cup of water. He didn't ask for iced tea. He didn't ask for soda. He didn't ask for coffee. He said, oh, can I just have a cup of coffee? And I was told about another circumstance where a woman sat there with a sandwich, I assume in a, in a wrapper. She sat there. She unwrapped that sandwich and it was like, oh, Oh, a sandwich. Oh. And we get upset when we go to a restaurant and our meat wasn't cooked properly. We go to a restaurant and they don't have that on the menu. That's not at, that's not in the, the buffet. We went to a, a grinder place a couple weeks ago. They didn't have tuna fish. Oh, okay, well. Give me another ham. A want. And when we're addressing to God Almighty who created us, I am sure that God can distinguish between a need and a want. There's a lot of wants. I want to serve the Lord. I want a wife. I want, when I go to the doctor to hear, my kidneys are healing.
So what I shall not want is that a contradiction. No, it's not. God will take care of us. Say, well, you know, I'm praying, I'm praying. All right, God answers prayers three ways. Yes, you can have it. No, you can't have it. You got to wait. We have to give it to me. Okay, it's either a no or he wants you to wait. It's that simple. Look at Mark 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 44. <laughs> I got to apologize for COVID. Messed up my throat. For all they did cast in their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, and even all her living. Okay, we know the, the story of the poor widow and her two mites. Of her want. Okay, let's run back to, to Psalm 23. To what's the want here? Well, Jesus tells her, even all her living. Now, I don't know what the case for this woman is, and I, I may be stretching it, forgive me if I am, but if she gave all her money, does she have bread? Does she have water? Okay, let's throw clothing in there. What? Does she want as a need that she's giving it all to God? And God says, I should supply your wants. That money, she wanted to do something with that money. And she gave it to God. And there may be times, and listen, I know Paul says give it cheerfully. Or not. There may be times you pull that money out of your pocket at church to put it. Oh, I want a chicken sandwich. I want. And you say, you know what? I'm going to give it to God. Now, that's not giving grudgingly. It's like uh, you're thinking about it. Are you going to do right or are you going to do wrong? You may have, like, maybe a missionary comes in and a special offering is taken up. I was going to do this with this money, but I'm going to give it to the Lord. I want to sleep in Sunday morning, but I'm going to go to church. I want to watch a TV midweek service. No, I'm going to go serve the Lord. Sometimes our wants disagree what is right for God. This woman could have done whatever she wanted with her money. And she may have had a want for that money, but she gave it to God. Luke 15. Luke 15. 14. And when they had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to want. So here's the prodigal son. He, he's got all this money. And then he has his hoo-ha with all his friends. Drinks are in the house. Runs on me, buddy. That's okay. I'll pay for that. Oh, you want that? I'll get you that. Then one day, he reaches in his pockets and he pulls lint, even if he's got that. What is his want here? Food. Water. Maybe his friends. You know, friendship is a good want. But it's not a need at the expense of Jesus. I've had many people who say, I'll be your friend, I'll be your friend. I've walked the walk of Christ. 
They want to walk carnal. They don't want to do right. They left. I ain't joining you. I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to serve the Lord to the best of ability. And if you want to step aside, bye. Because I want to serve the Lord. I don't want a carnality. I don't want the world. I got too much problems with my sins in the Lord. Here's a want. Oh, maybe he's beginning to want to go back to his father's house. Proverbs. Thirty-one, eleven. This is the the virtuous woman. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall not, so that he shall have no need of spoil. What's that? She's not a spendthrift. You don't have to have money to please her. You don't have to buy her things. I've been married twice and death. My wife Lisa, she, she didn't need nothing. The essentials. And I was surprised her with things. I come home from work I buy, and she really enjoyed it, but you know, I didn't have to. And we go to the store and she'd be looking at the dress and say, get one. Oh, no, 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 get one. Find a shirt, get one. And there are other women, they're not happy unless you're spending money and you're doing things with money and you've you got to lavish them. There's a wife that would have need of her husband and, her, and his love and care. And there would be a wife there would have a need of things. This need is not essential. Okay, she needs what her husband would provide. Food and maybe, you know, go out and water. Clothing would be nice. The bills paid. But there is no need for excess. And see, the problem is, as Americans, we need in excess. Beyond what we need for one. I mean, we need, I said, we need water. Okay. Well, they got, got smart water and we got uh, hydrated water and we got vitamin water and we got water with pizzazz and we got water with bubbles. And what about just water? You know? Now, sometimes a need. Okay, it's good to have the little extra. You go in the store, you go into a fast food restaurant, and you get the double hamburger. But can you deal with just the plain hamburger? How about you ain't got enough money? Can you deal with a plain hamburger that your wife or your child who is ever with you? They can maybe get the big hamburger. This woman here will deal with a morsel of food in order for her family to have a meal. I've seen that in my mother, and I've seen that in my grandmother, and I've seen that in my wife, please. You'll look at their plate, and there's only a little bit on that plate. So everybody can have their plate. You see that around Thanksgiving time. 
You know, your wife is up and up and down, up and down. She don't get much to eat, but everybody else gets. Matthew 6, 8. Uh, yeah, Matthew 6, 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth the things that you have need of. Now, Psalm 23 said we'll have no need. Matthew 6, 6 says that God knows what we need. The want of Psalm 23 and the knowledge of the need. Okay, God knows you need transportation to go to work. And you may be thinking, oh, that fast sports car, that red, up-to-date, brand-new red sports car. God says, a bus, a co-worker. Well, 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 God, yeah, you see, we have a want to go to work. God will supply our way to get to work. And the need is how are you going to get there? And our eyes may, Ooh. you know, we got to have a place to live. And you could, oh, I want a, I want a house, I want two bathrooms, and I want enough bedrooms and a kitchen, and a garage, and a work area, and all that. And God says, no, uh, I'll give you an apartment. Here in Florida, Florida, what about the homeless? A Christian homeless lives in a tent. Can you be content for your need for housing? And God gives you a tent. Now, a tent may not be what you want, but a tent may be you need, so when it rains, you don't get wet. And we've got to come to this want and need because America is going to fall. It's not, is it going to fall? It's <coughs> the question is, when? When are we going to get back to the basic need of food, water, air, light? There are people for light. They go to these tanning areas. They got to lay out in front of the sun. Our ancestors in early America had a candle for a light. And since that wasn't much light, they blew their eyeballs for seeing in old age from reading. John 13. 29. For some of them thought, because Judas had to beg, that Jesus said, and buy those things which we have need against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So the disciples are thinking, okay, Judas is the treasurer. We are lacking somewhere at the meal. We are lacking somewhere in our ministry. There's something needed. But is that need essential? I mean, if you go to the grocery store and you want to get coffee, man, you can find tons and tons and tons of coffee. But are you content with a tin or bag of coffee grounds 
that just says coffee. And you don't need French vanilla. You don't need dry roll. You don't need, you know, all the fancy. See, the thing, it comes down to it. Do we want the bare essential or do we want the fancy? Would I be seen on the streets of my town riding a bicycle I got at the second hand store for 10 bucks? Or do I got to go to the retail store and buy one for 129? And I'm telling you right now, as I'm doing this message right now, I got somebody in my mind that that's why they weren't happy. You see, oh, I I, I got to get out of my apartment. I got to get into a house. Okay, you get the house. Then you buy a camper to get out of the house. Then you buy the boat to get away from the camper to get away from the house. Then you got to go on the cruise to get away from the boat to get away from the camper to get away from the house. You see, the human being gets to, okay, I want A. Okay, God gave me A. Now I want B. God gives us B. I got to have C. Our wants and desires keeps going. Oh, if I only had this, I'll be satisfied. Marijuana usage. I'll just take a toll. I know people who started off with just taking a toe of the roach and they're doing hard drugs with needles. It started with marijuana. There are people, I'll just look at that girly picture. And they're out raping women and torturing women. Because they looked at a picture. There are children. Dad, can I have a sip of your beer? Sure, son, have a sip of your beer. And they're full-blown alcoholics today. You know, we say, little as much as when God's in it. Little can be much when it's sin. And we got to understand the need and the want. I cannot be satisfied with the simple desire of water. I grew up with soda. I'm addicted to soda. There may come a day in America, you know what? I'm going to have to be content with water. How about people over in the third world nation? What about muddy water? That they're sitting there drinking water that crocodiles or alligators swim in. Or the hippos walk through. How about the water where they wash themselves? Can you get to the point where you got to take water and you got to drink water through a handkerchief? It's water. It may not be the, the fancy class... Three dollars a bottle of water. Philippians. Philippians 4.19. But my God should supply all your need. Now there's a difference between one of Psalm 23 and a need. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What is a need? It's essential. A need is air, food, water, light. So what was some I shall not want? 
I want this, but I haven't gotten it. Maybe God said no. Now you don't need to want that no more. It is something for a young man who's just got married. And he's just venturing out in his marriagehood. And he's talking to his dad and said, yeah, dad, that big red sports car I've been dreaming about. I had the pictures on my wall in the bedroom and all that. I'm finally going to, I finally can afford it. <clears throat> and the father says, son, that's nice. Where are you going to fit the baby? You got a brand new wife. She's beautiful. She, she's lovely. She loves you. She adores you. She's pregnant with my grandchild. Where are you going to fit that baby? You got to take that one. You got to say goodbye to that one or put it off to the way in the future. You have a need now. You have a need. You got to fit a third person. That car you like, that only fits two. Now, see, when we go to God and we say, God's not answering my prayer, is it essential? Or is it a desire? A need is limited. A want is unlimited. You can want a car. Man, there's all kinds of cars out there. I need transportation. It may be limited. This a bicycle has tires. A moped has tires. The bus has tires. Even the Apostle Paul's in the perils of his life said he hungered and thirst. Sometimes the need, the essentials, are not going to be there. And there have been through Christians throughout church history. The food or the water has been gone, scarce. The bread has been moldy and they're in prison and moldy and filthy. And the water is just as worse. That's not what you wanted. But that's a need. And if we're going to head, I don't know if we're going to, but we're going we're going to head to a financial collapse. If the Christians head to a persecution, These new modern Christians are not going to be able to handle it. There's a need for air, food, water, and light. And in the tribulation period, in order to get food and water, you've got to receive the mark. Or you're going to have to accept the least awfulest condition to get what you need. In the tribulation period, if you are on oxygen and you don't want that, that mark, you want to serve God, you don't want anything to do with Satan and his antichrist. Well, when they turn off the oxygen and you die, See, God supply all your need. What do you do when you're dead? The wages of sin is, is death. That's written to Christians. When you are dead, your body does not need food, water, light, and air. And in your life, you may not need food and water 
every four hours. There is a period of time, and I didn't look it up. You can live days without water. You can live longer without food. You can live a period of time without light. You can only last minutes without air. You might be put into a condition, they're not going to give you food. Days. And it's not going to be what you want. I hate fish. I may get to the condition where they only feed me three or four days and they throw fish at me. I'm going to like fish, I think, or I'm going to die. And you got to thank God, even in a prison camp, even in a concentration camp, even the filth they give you to. I'm talking about church history. Boxes, Book of Mara, with the filth that they give you to survive. You say, you got to bow your head and say, Lord God, I thank you for this meal. Because right now in the third world nations, they are eating and drinking as saved individuals, without a Bible, without luxury. And their food and their water is filth. And they can thank God. And they don't want a, a telephone. They don't want a car. Can you imagine what their prayers are? And I, I can't even imagine. I can't imagine what they would be coveting. Compared to American. First John. So you gotta get your nose in the church history. You gotta get your nose in the world around you. Because not everybody lives in the luxury that we live in. That don't look like Oh, 17. But whoso, 1 John 3, 17. For whoso has the world's goods, or good, excuse me, and sees his brother have need, and shut up his bowels and compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? Will be the need. As a street preacher, I've come with all kinds of people come up to me to have a need. Okay. Oh, sir, can I, can I have some money now? What do you want? Uh, I want some food. There's a convenience store right here. Let's go in. I'll get you a sandwich, a drink, and a, and a bag of chips or a cupcake or something like that. No, 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 no. Can, can I get something? I'll get something later. Uh, you can put it in a bag and you can eat it later. No, oh, no. No, you know what? They, they want your money to go buy drugs. Or go buy booze or go buy sex. And the fact is that you have offered to buy them a meal. That's not what they want. And when you, when somebody comes up to you, sir, can I have somebody? What would you like? I want something to eat. I'm hungry. Let's go in this convenience store. This convenience store, I'll tell you what. I'll get you a sandwich or, or chicken. I'll get you a dessert. And I'll get you a big bottle of whatever you want to drink. That's, you know, soda or water. I won't buy you nothing alcohol. And I won't buy you anything. And they go in there. And they pick up this, this sandwich. Don't you want this, the one with the works? You sure? Yeah. No, this one comes with lettuce and tomato. 
Are you sure? Yeah, okay. And they go over there and look at the sodas. What, you want a soda? Really? Yeah. They grab a little soda. No, no, get the big one. You, you want that? You want that brand? Get the big one. Okay. Now, what do you want for dessert? And they pick up a little bag of chips. You, you get them a big bag. They probably been eating for a while. And you go up to the register and they put this stuff down and you hand the, the guy the money and he puts it in the bag and you hand it to the person. And, and they get this big old smile on their face, and you give them a gospel track, and they go off, and they're sitting over there, and they're eating. And they're enjoying the food that you bought them. They really had a need. What's the need of food or water? There may be somebody who has a need that's not food or water, and it's really not essential, but the fact is, like a nursing home, there may be somebody that needs <coughs> someone to talk to, a friend. Even God told Adam when he's all by himself, he's got all the animals, he says, you know what, I need to help me for him. It's not good that man should be alone. <coughs> Forgive me. Maybe there's a Christian that you need to befriend. Maybe you don't know how to be a friend. You see, you don't have to get the big fancy. Let's say... You're at a fast food restaurant. Somebody goes, uh, you got some money? What do you need? I'm hungry. And you go in that fast food restaurant with them, and you get them a double cheeseburger, big fries, and all you can drink. And you pay for it. They sit down to the table. They're like, oh. they think you're an angel. And you show them how to fill up the store, and they sit there, and you got gospel tracks. You hand them gospel tracks. You turn around, I mean, he's got, he's got his burger, he's got fries, he's got a drink. And you know what you do? You turn around, you look out the door as you're walking away, you see him reading God's word, eating a french fry. That makes you feel good. That makes you thank the Lord for your blessings. A hurricane should make you say, Lord God, I have been absent. Of thanking you. But it hasn't. For too many. For some yes. Revelation. Revelation 21. 20. Oh that's 23. I got it right there. And the city had no need of sun. Neither of the moon to shine it. We need the sun. And according to Genesis 1, we need the moon for seasons. Now, in the tribulation period, that sun's going to go out. The moon's going to go out. It's going to go dark. But if that sun were to go out right now, and it's not going to, but if it were to go out right now, life would die. This planet would get ice cold. We would not have the nutrients from the sun, vitamin D from the sun. If that sun did not shine, I don't know how many days it would be. If it totally went out, it won't into the tribulation period. Life will die. But in New Jerusalem, the sun and the moon will not be essential. We won't need it. But we do have light. We have light from God in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So look at the end of verse 23. The Lamb shall be the light thereof. Luke. Luke 11. Luke 11. 
Luke 11, 9. Now we know this passage. I say to you, ask and it shall be given you. Sometimes you don't ask. God knows what you you read that so God knows what yeah but God wants you to ask I'm always after my children are bad for that we're in the grocery store they don't ask for nothing we get home and they eat my pickles those are my pickles I don't care what you say those are my pickles well when we were at the store, did you ask for pickles? No. Did we say in the grocery store, get anything you want? Yeah. Did you say? My daughter's finally got like that. My daughter will be in the store. She said, Dad, can I get this? Dad, can I? Finally, she's learned. Dad, can I get a, a jar of pickles? Yes, you get a jar of pickles. You can leave mine alone. You get in trouble when you ate, when I go to get my pickles and you left me one pickle. Because you didn't ask at the store, can I get pickles? Seek and you shall find. Sometimes you got to go get, you got to go look. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. You can stand outside the door you want. Oh, they won't let me in their house. They won't, you know. They don't. Have you knocked on the door? No. Yeah, I know God knows our needs. I know God knows our wants. Did you ask him? Did you seek? Is that Would that really be good for me? Could I please God with that? And then you knock, say, Lord, I looked at this. I said, everybody knows I'm looking for a wife. I need a companion. I need a friend. I need someone to love and to love me back. And then we can serve the Lord together as husband and wife, as one. We can please the Lord together, a three, four chord. God. Me as a husband and a wife. It's not good that I should be alone. Lord, I need to help me. Psalm, uh, Proverbs 18, it is favor of God, to, to a wife, a good wife. Lord, I need your favor. Lord, I'm asking you for a wife and I look at, listen, I need, a, I need a safe wife. The Bible says a safe wife. I need a wife who's going to willing to serve you and want to serve you. And you just can't, God, I want that big flashy red car. God, I want that job. Uh, that job's going to take you away from Sunday. That job's going to put you amongst wicked people, which could cause you to backslide and leave God. That career could interrupt your family. That person that you want to be your spouse could destroy your family, destroy you. And the need and essential is primarily. If I never got it, would I still be happy and rejoicing in the Lord, and go to the grave or rapture? I wanted it, but I didn't get it. I mean, it's not like a need of, of food. You can't go 30 or 40 years without food.
Can you live without it? And still survive and serve God. Is there benefits if you were to get it that it would please God and not just you? And if it is a essential need, can you deal with the basics? The 50 cent rather than the $2.50. <coughs> is And when you think of needs and wants, remember and study and read and look at your brethren in the third world country. They go to sleep at night, and they wake up in the morning, they live out their day, and they go to sleep at night, and they wake up in the morning. They're happy serving the Lord. They're rejoicing in the Lord. And they don't have a speck of what you have in America, England, or wherever you live watching this video. I have seen Chinese, I have seen island nation people when they brought in a box of Bible and they love and they hug and they hold on and they reverence getting a Bible. My pastor, his Bible, his wife bought him in. I think it was a graduation. Whatever, she bought him a Bible and he went and had it rebound or something. That's a special Bible. That's a Bible that's a bond between his wife and God. And I've seen but they take their Bibles and swing it across the, the, the blacktop of the basketball court. I've seen Bibles get flown off the roofs as they're leaving the church. I've seen Bibles left out in the rain. I know a pastor who don't even bring his Bible to the pulpit or the podium. He's going to preach and teach from. We have an essential in the Word of God. The Bible is air, food, water, and light. As Jesus is air, food, water, and light. Count your many blessings and name them one by one. Ask yourself, Do I really need it? Or maybe, okay, I need it. Maybe I don't need something as fancy as that. Maybe it's just a get off all by yourself before God in a prayer closet and let God tell you. <clears throat> 